Hi there, my name is Julia and welcome to my channel, A Painter's Vlog. Due to the pandemic, my partner and I are now back on U.S. soil as global circumstances cut our 2020 move to Cambodia short. Upon our return, we decided to build out a 1995 Ford E350 ambulance in order to travel our own home country. Her name is Jambo. Please join us for our van build series, Getting Her Ready. All right, just starting to put in the flooring today. Look at this. And we got the solar panel up on top. Let's see if I can get up there. All right, so the, f the flooring for the front part of the van is completed. Super easy, actually, with this Mohawk faux wood look. And then we left, we left it out here, first of all, because we didn't buy enough, but secondly, because this is pretty much going to be framed out and it's going to be our bed anyway. So we're going to just lay a different kind of wood down for the garage area. And then that is where our bed is officially going to start. Blair's dad gave us these beautiful oak planks that he has just had for years up in the barn. So I'm giving them a scrub down. There were some wasps nests and all sorts of things. And here they are drying off in the sun. And I think what I'm going to do is um, plane these down and get them nice and sanded and then coat them with a white, a milky white tint that's kind of like aged, like gives an aged look. Um, just because I don't want them this golden color, I'm not really the biggest fan of the, that golden color. And want to make it look kind of more weathered, so to match the floors. It's quite a little project, but I'm so thankful for all this wood. Thank you so much, Ed. that muscle you know what I'm saying I gotta put that put that arm work in you know <laughs> <laughs> okay. this is the mid van build out grind you know where after a couple months you got all the parts ordered it's not as exciting as it once was but it's still exciting if that makes any sense <laughs> And you kind of want it done, but you're kind of still enjoying the process, you know? That's where we're at right now. We both hate the yellow finish, and Blair has this amazing planer here. This. Oh, you want me to demonstrate? These are the raw boards. So you basically took off that ugly golden finish. <laughs> That's a C-H-A-M-F-E-R. Strange word, right? With an F. Yes. So, it's a nice little clean detail that any carpenter that uh, is doing any kind of work can make themselves look like a professional even though they're an amateur. <laughs> Not like me, of course. There you go. <laughs> so basically, yeah, it's like this little beveled edge here. And it makes it look so nice. And I'm going to stain it with this sun bleached oil based stain. Did you say you have some deviled eggs? Yeah, deviled <laughs> eggs. Oh, beveled edge, I said. So yeah, I wanted this like white sun bleach because I really like the color of the floor and I didn't I didn't want too many clashing woods basically. Got my uh, laundry shirt on representing Sam Wright. <laughs> Look at this exciting moment. Our bed frame is getting put in. Woo! Look at this. Full size bed in the back of the Jambo. Look at this construction. Thank God for Blair, who is such a phenomenal carpenter. Wow. Comes right back to the edge. So. And we ordered our mattress. We got a. We went with a six-inch green tea bamboo memory foam cooling gel mattress. Hey guys, what kind of insulation? 
inflation did we go for for our man? Have my full. Mmm, <laughs> smells like a farm. Okay, so we went with Havelock Wool because we heard that this is just the top of the line and then when we were looking at other insulation, it was thin, flimsy, and it just didn't seem to have the same kind of integrity as Havelock Wool. And as you can see, this is safe to work with. It's not that nasty like pink shit and it, it seems like it tears apart pretty well, right? Yeah. So we can easily stuff it into all the little nooks and crannies in the corners and everything. And we just heard that this is the best insulation to go for when it comes to fans. So that's why we went with it. But yeah, it was $180 for this bag right here. Um, that was also $40 for the shipping, which was really excessive shipping, but oh well, it's worth it. We just couldn't, it took us a while to pull a trigger on what we were gonna get for the insulation. And this was just what we heard from every freaking single person. So yeah, that's why we went with Havelock. All right guys, so today we're putting in the Havelock wool and I watched a bunch of DIY YouTube videos on how to put the Havelock wool properly in without compromising the integrity of the interior of the van. So the best way to put Havelock wool in is to take some bale twine or some string and then run it pretty much lengthwise or wherever you're putting it in and then you're gonna stuff the Havelock wool behind the bale twine. And we're just gonna staple it up here. So if you look over there, we're gonna staple it on that piece of wood and then on this piece of wood and then maybe do that three or four times and then tuck the Havelock wool under it. So it'll be kind of like a little nest for it. So we were just talking about how luxurious the Havelock wool is. It's as Blair, Blair has worked with insulation before and he said it's an absolutely luxury to be working with this material because it's not itchy. And I believe the wool is from New Zealand, from sheep in New Zealand. Um, and I just feel like this is very luxurious. I feel like it's gonna keep us warm and it's just super high quality. So, and it smells like a farm. <laughs> But you see how thick this is? So we counted, we got 19 in this big bag, and so I think that'll be plenty to do the van in because we can kind of separate some of these layers if we need. But I think we're gonna keep it thick on the ceiling, so. All right, let's put this puppy in. All right, so we used a multitude of methods here to get the Havelock woolen. Um, so we have used the string, but only on the edges. And then Blair took these little shims that you can see running longwise. So all those little shims, like right there, right there, right there, right there, that's kind of holding everything up. And then this part was actually already in there, so. But yeah, this is looking super legit. It's gonna keep us nice and warm and cozy in the winter. Well, maybe not the winter, but at least the fall months. We're gonna do our best to avoid winter as much as possible. And then we're bringing the wool, most of the wires in front. Um, with the solar panel wires, we're gonna keep that in behind the wool because it's not as necessary because they run all the way down here. But yeah. This also comes in handy when installing the Havelock wool. So just to get yourself a little you know, shim type thing to kind of get it in the little edges. It's only so good as your weakest link, so all these little cracks, we're making sure to pull the wool down and then together to kind of bind the fibers of the wool. Now I really like working with the wool because it stretches and you can just kind of stuff it in all these little areas that you wouldn't otherwise maybe be able to get to if you had like that silver kind of insulation. Like for instance, we'll be able to stuff it in all these little holes in here. We did do a little bit of this to fill up some of the holes, but we're gonna put sheep's wool in, sheep's wool in here. So our inverter is going to go right here in a constructed self-contained box under the bed and then we're now just kind of figuring out where we're going to have our outlets. We're going to have three regular AC outlets that run one is going to be here on the side of a big 
armoire type thing that we're gonna have. And then on the other side, this is gonna be like kind of a little kitchenette area. There's gonna be another plug. And then over here, we're gonna run one more um, above our stove and sink area. All right, guys, um, just to catch you up with the Jambulance, this is what's going on. We just got Jambo back after not having her for two weeks because she was in the shop for pretty major repairs. Uh, we basically got the transmission fluid flush. We also had the ICP and the IPR sensors replaced. Uh, we also had all eight glow plugs taken out and replaced with new ones because she was having a hard time starting in the cold weather in the morning. And so yeah, it was all in all about $2,000 in repair, re repairs, which hurt pretty badly, but you know what? We're really glad that we got it done and she is actually in tip top peak condition and ready to hit the road cross country. <sighs> so, well, the stuff inside is not ready, but you know, in the interior and being of sound machinery, she's ready. So as you can see, we have all of the Havelock woolen and Blair pulled through all the electric. So that's ready to be hooked up and yeah. And so right now what I'm doing today is I'm putting a second coat of finishing on the cabinets. So here we are. Um, I'm just using this basically last and last waterborne acrylic urethane, ultra clear wood finish, satin of course. We don't want any glossy finish here. So I'm just doing a second coat on these beautiful cabinets that Blair built. This is our ceiling tall armoire, and so we're going to be able to hang some coats and some shirts and clothes in the Jamulance, which is a pretty awesome feature, I think. And then this is going to be installed in the kitchen area. It was a little bit of a tough run just not having her here, but we were luckily able to work on some of the cabinetry, and by we I mean Blair because he's doing an awesome job. But the place that we brought it to was Becker's. We had initially gone to a specialty Ford place and they did an awesome job. We just wanted a second opinion and um, they seemed to be really busy in the Ford place. So we brought it to Becker's Auto and they did an amazing job. They're located just about 20 minutes from here, from Burlingham um, between Montgomery and Middletown. So we're very, very happy with their work. Can't speak highly enough about those guys over there. And it feels so good to have our van back and in tip top shape running and uh, hopefully we can meet our deadline in the next two weeks because we're really trying to get out of here roughly on October 25th, which is kind of a month after we had thought we were going to get out of here. But right now everything is so nebulous and we're just going to work long days and try to get the cabinetry in and the electric installed and all the finishing touches as much as we can before scooting out of here. So we'll keep you updated. Yeah. So as always, doing several projects in the middle of several other projects, editing videos, working on an album cover for DJ Abilities, the works. But um, yeah, we'll see if we can get some footage here. Go ahead and give you guys a glimpse of the inside of the van right now. So all of the furniture is now installed. As you can see, this is our sink area, and we're actually going to put toppers or like a topping on any of the cabinet tops here. So this is still raw, but this is going to be where our sink is, and we're looking to install the spout or faucet here, so that we can actually shower outside the van right here. So. It would be one of those like pull away spouts, you know, but we're not even thinking about that right now because we really just want to get on the road and yeah, all of these cabinets are in here and as you can see, we have the holes cut for all the wiring and by we, once again, I mean Blair. Blair has been an amazing, amazing champion of all of this. So here we have like a 12 volt cigarette lighter thing that we can charge our phones in. And then this is our Renergy switch. 
and this is gonna be this is our capacity indicator so all right today we have started acclimating Butterball to life in the van so I just really want to make her comfortable she's actually inside right now but she was sleeping in here earlier this is her little carrier that we got at five and below it's like the best five dollar purchase we've ever got and this is her little baby blanket she's had since she was a little kitten this is her little snake toy but yeah I just really wanted to make her feel comfortable in here and let her know that this is a safe space for her and I just put a quilt down for now and brought her some food and some catnip but she seems to really like it she really liked when I closed the doors and there was like a little patch of Sun and she could sit in here so as you can see over here this is the view out and right now Blair's working on the covering for this area we were originally hoping to get a little bit of space in this nook here but honestly because this is an ambulance an old ambulance there's so much wiring like could this be more insane so and you guys know that we had some trials and tribulations with all the wiring so we had to kind of reconfigure a lot of that um, Blair just cut a notch in here yesterday, which is really nice because we could hide this big tube of wiring in the corner and it wouldn't be obtrusive or show. But that's pretty much where we're at with that, guys. Van's coming along. We cannot wait to get this puppy done, but having a whole lot of fun doing it. Oh, wow, babe, that's usually my job. Whoops. Blair put the backing up here so we can start to put the planks of wood on really soon, probably in the next four or five days, maybe even sooner actually. And then up here, oh, the wires are finally covered. That's a huge win for us because we've been looking at the eyesore for a long time. And today he is working on the cabinets. So just as an update, whew, we're gonna do um, cabinets that only come out to about right here because if you follow this line down um this is the kitchen area or like cutting area for vegetables and fruits and then we're gonna have our fridge over here but we didn't want the upper cabinets to come out too far so that's why they're just gonna come out about this far so yeah they are gonna be more shallow cabinets of course but hey we're dealing with space limitations here and then up here we're gonna have the cabinets for our clothing so, ooh, guys, we are on a home stretch here. What's up, guys? Today is an exciting day because actually today is one of the most iconic days of the van build because today is when we start to put in the side slats. So all of the wood, all of that beautiful oak wood that you saw me staining pretty much two months ago is going to go in today. We're going to try to just have an amazing work day. We have loads of energy today. Just finished a badass yoga session and... Yeah, I feel good energy today. I think we're just gonna kill it. So right now what I'm gonna do is Make sure that this insulation is in like stuffed in all the little corners and pockets because We put this insulation in about a month ago and it started kind of drooping a little bit in certain areas So I'm just gonna tuck it in and take note of where any wires are so we don't staple into any wires and We're gonna have a great day. So we'll share some of how we install this wood um, just to give a quick glimpse, if you look on the sides here, this is where Blair has built a frame. Now, our van is really different than, say, a Mercedes Sprinter, which are um, one of the more common vans to do a van build in. Our van is really different because it had a lot of curves in it. It's not just like a box. It's not straight up and down. So Blair had to be super genius, super creative, and, you know, come up with a framing system so we can adhere the wood. So that in itself was a lot to take in. But it looks like we're ready to go, so let's get to it. I know that all I think about is you. Okay, as I mentioned before, we actually stained the wood and this is what it looked like before. So it's kind of this ugly yellow tone and this is actually flooring. So Blair took each piece and beveled the edge to make it look like it was actually designed to go on a wall. And this is what the product looks like now. Putting our walls in today. First 
boards in, baby. Oh, they look so beautiful. Safety first. Jazz up on coffee. <laughs> What are you doing? She's still playing in the bag of wool. Making mistakes already. God, this is looking good and it's so satisfying to cover these walls up after having them exposed for so long. Look at this. Anyone who's ever converted a van knows this feeling, man. <laughs> Just look at the sunshine for a moment coming in to our bedroom because this is a moment and the world is shining on us right now. Okay, back to work. All right, so right now what we're doing is we're actually creating an angle here because as you can see at the top, the van curves up. So it makes it very, very tricky because it's not just straight across. So basically what we're doing right now is we're putting a 3 eighths of an inch on the lower one and then how much is that, a half an inch up there? This is 3 quarter and then we're going to need quarters. to put another half inch above that. And so that way it can kind of curve up and then Blair's going to put a soffit on this extreme area and then we're going to go again with the planks up on top. Tricky. All right, so we decided to go with shims in the back to get this nice curve here. All right, I think that's gonna work. is supposed to be the easiest but in the case of a van build out the last piece is generally the hardest we're coming to find so with each of the sides on the bed the last piece is problematic because of this drastic slope and all of the insanity that's going on up here and yeah so we have been dealing with this piece for like an hour so we decided to leave the last puzzle piece till tomorrow morning because sometimes when you try to do things last minute just to get it all done, it might not work out. So yeah, we're just gonna leave it until tomorrow morning. <sighs> I'm so proud of our work that we've done today and we still have at least a bit of a road to go. We're hoping to get out of here in a week, but who knows? I've learned that things just take patience, things take time, and this van build is really showing me that. So it's a great teacher. All right, night guys, I'll see you in the morning. Well, day two of putting the wooden slats in, um, and actually today before we do that, we have to go pick up two new batteries because our awesome shop, Becker's Auto, over in Montgomery, tested our batteries, and turns out two out of the three are just shit. So, putting another $250 into the Jambulance, and still feeling great. <laughs> right, Kitty? Yeah, Becker's Auto! Um, right up here is where we have a pretty extreme curve and so we're trying to figure out how to curve these straight planks of wood so there's a nice roundness up to the ceiling and we are going to be working on the ceiling today it's already two o'clock so <laughs> but as I said we had to go pick up the batteries today so we lost a few hours
cutting the holes for the lights is a sincere bitch. Just letting you know. Thought I'd come out here and just have a quick chat. It is the end of day two of installing the wooden slats on the side of the van. And if you could maybe tell in some of the earlier footage, I was really feeling frustrated today. And during my meditations in the morning, I'm just feeling frustrated because we've been here for nearly three months building this van out and it sometimes some some days it just seems like there's no end in sight and it can be really really frustrating but you know awesome things and good things in this world don't come easily a lot of the time and a lot of people wouldn't even embark on something like that so I'm really thankful to have the opportunity as well as the funds and the time and the space and the freedom to, to do a project like this. And one of the biggest things I thought during my meditation this morning was when I started to feel sorry for myself at the fact that I miss Cambodia so much and that dream was cut short, even though we are starting a new dream, it's like I feel at this point tethered to where we're at even though it's been amazing spending time up here upstate with Blair's parents and like, I would feel this way anywhere, you know, because when, when I'm stationary for too long, I start to get depressed. And so I'm feeling a lot of anxiety and a lot of um, just stagnation. I'm ready to move. I'm ready to embark on this new dream and it's just taking so long. And, you know, so when I started going down that path during my meditation this morning, I realized that today in the United States, we've hit the highest number of coronavirus cases, over 77,000 new cases in one day. And I realized even though everyone has the right to grieve and go through whatever they're going through, whatever I'm going through is so far less than what a lot of other people are going through or have gone through with this whole virus. And the bottom line is, this year threw everyone for a fucking loop, you know? This year threw everyone into an unknown path and none of us knew what we were gonna be reckoning with. and. I feel like we're all in the same boat and it's like so many times throughout the past six months I've just felt this underlying like anger you know and and sometimes I direct the anger at my partner or just whatever's around you know like I'll get angry at my painting or and I realized that that anger is just coming through this like deep, deep sadness. And I'm picking up on the currents and the emotions of society and what everyone is going through. And it's like, <sighs> can you all relate? I'm sure you can. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of cap off this day and just kind of let you know why I didn't film very much and why I wasn't in the best mood not even as much as yesterday and it's just so interesting how one day you can feel so up and then the next day just feels so freaking frustrated you know will the van build ever end day 5678 no i'm just kidding but this is something new and you know blair's dad brought up a really good point the other day it's like We've never done anything like this and we want to get it right. So there's a lot of deli deliberation, a lot of patience, a lot of mistakes, a lot of trial and error. And if we ever did this again, which I probably won't, not that I'm, you know, not having fun most of the time, but we wouldn't make as many mistakes as we're making now, but that's part of the process. So anyway, <sighs> see you all tomorrow. All right, so looks like we ran out of wood, the actual siding that we had initially um, prepared. So we are preparing more siding. Luckily, Blair's dad had a lot of extra from that flooring job. So here we are once again cleaning and then we are planing each piece with this badass planer here. And then we'll be sand or then we'll be staining. So at least it's a beautiful day. Tomorrow it's supposed to be cold, so we're taking advantage of the weather today and getting all of this wood prepped so we can finish installing all of the wood tomorrow. So let's go ahead and give you a peek on what's going on. This is the progress that we've made 
so far and it is looking absolutely divine. I am in such a better mood than I was yesterday. I'm just feeling like just really great. I just painted for about three, four hours and my painting looks great and this is just like rocking and rolling. So yesterday Blair and I knocked out a lot of the humps, a lot of the hard parts and did a lot of trial and error and problem solving, especially with the curve up here. So as you can see, this curve turned out amazing, just amazing. And the way Blair achieved that was he created a piece of wood that just um, had a straight line on one edge and then a curve on the other. And then we planked the wood following that curve. So yeah, we got two of the lights in and ooh -wee. feeling pretty good guys. I know we're going to be delayed on our epic road trip, but who cares? We're heading to warmer weather anyway. <laughs> so yeah, feeling so much better today and we'll see what we get. Time to stain. With the last remaining light of fall. All right, so yesterday Blair and I went to the most awesome place and it's right up by the road. I, it, there's actually a UFO outside of the place and then that caught our eye and then there's a little sign right next to it because they don't do much advertising that says live wood slabs. So we have been meaning to stop in and we picked up these gorgeous cherry wood slabs. Look at these. Obviously cut from the same tree, from the same slice. So this would basically go right on top of this. It's part of the same trunk. And these are gonna be our countertops. So this is when they're raw, they're just cut. And Blair's gonna go ahead and plane these down and you will not believe the difference once these are done. These are exceptional pieces of art, and we got both of these slabs for $60 each for a total of $120, which is an extremely amazing price, according to Blair, especially for cherry wood. You'll see we've got the live edge here with the bark. I don't know if you can see that very well. Let me go ahead and go from this angle. Look at that. A nice like little split down here. Just beautiful. So I will share some more of this process once Blair gets going. And then they also gave us a few other pieces for free. So there's a couple more slabs. It was just the kindest man. I believe he was Irish, but he was just really awesome. Okay, cool. All right, babe, I'm gonna go make breakfast. Oh, boy. You still filming me? Uh-huh. It's a lovely day, so I figured I would just um, take some pictures of the van, some progress pictures, because I haven't really updated you guys in a while. It's been an extremely miserable week. This entire last week was all rainy, and it was cold, and it was super miserable, so Blair ran the cord into the van and had the space heater in here, and it was just like, he's such a champion, but... These are our live slab countertops and they are just exquisite. So we filled this rot area with resin and it just looks so beautiful. And we picked up this sink faucet head at I believe Home Depot or maybe it was Lowe's actually. But the purpose of this is so we can swing it outside of the van and we could possibly take a mini shower if we would like. So, um, we still have yet to hook up the water tank. We're probably gonna get an electric one. And then he put in the drawers. And if you can see, it's a little bit sunny. All of these drawers are cut from one solid piece of wood. 
So beautiful. Let me see if I can get a better shot in here. We're coming inside the van. There we are. So yeah, as you can see, the grain all works together and fits together. And what we're gonna be working on today is the um, this area here. So we're gonna be putting a soffit. It was just such an awkward area that we couldn't continue this planking down through it, through it. So we're gonna put a soffit there. Got the bookshelf in yesterday. It looks so beautiful. And we used um, the edge from the cherry slabs that we had. So it's another live edge there. Got a couple books up there just for measuring. And then we just used a dowel to hold all the books in. Still have to cover these lights back here. So right now, as I said, we're, uh, what we need to finish is the soffit all around the edge of the top part. And this is really going to finish the look of pretty much everything. I can't wait. And we're, we um, also have to get the two drawers for down here. So these are going to be really big drawers for us to hold our clothing. And they're going to be pull-out drawers. So in the meantime, this looks beautiful. I finally found a pack of baby hangers that were small enough to actually fit in here because it's not as big as a normal armoire. And then I really like this hardware up here. This is awesome. It's like nice and quiet. Uh, we might exchange some of these because these are the Rockler ones and you can see that they click and then you just push them up and down. But I mean, they're still really nice, so we'll see. And then here's the other live slab here and you can see the beautiful rounded corner. So Blair just like, shot these out of the park. I'm so impressed. So hey guys, thank you so much for checking out our van build. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe to this channel and we'll see you in the next one. Fabulous. <laughs>